So now that we have seen linear transformations, we will define a new sort of objects called linear functionals. Okay. So suppose you have a vector space, finite dimensional vector space over a field F, right. And we define this object V prime, okay, in the following manner. F which is a mapping from V to the field such that F is <coughs> linear, okay. This is what we shall now study. Some examples first to at least satisfy yourself that uh, such objects do exist. So for example, let us say V is nothing but um, say R M cross N. So it is a vector space of M cross N matrices, all right. And define F rather F from V to R like so. How? If there is an object A here or rather let us take an object X here, it gets mapped to trace. You know what is a trace, right? Trace is the sum of the diagonal entries of a square matrix. So, it is the trace of A X for some fixed A belonging to R n cross M. Can you verify that this, so this is an example, can you verify that this is linear? See that is all that you need. You need objects in V to be mapped to the field F and you need such mappings in a special manner such that this F is linear. So what do you have to do? You have to take two different X's, say X1 and X2 and look at the effect of this operation on alpha X1 plus X2. So of course by the linearity of this trace operation, yeah and this A is basically even though X is not square because of the dimensions of A, you see it is M cross N, so this is N cross M. So this resultant is just N cross N matrix. So it is a square matrix, definitely has a legitimate trace. So it is going to be a linear map. But remember it is a very special linear map. It is not just a map from any V to any W, but the W in this case is fixed. It is F. Now what is the dimension of F over F? any field over itself, 1. I mean the multiplicative identity is a basis, is a standard basis, right. So if I apply the rank nullity theorem, right, on objects inside this, right, what do you think I can get? What are the possibilities that can come up? Of course, the rank nullity theorem would say the dimension V is equal to dimension kernel F plus dimension image of F. So what is so special about this particular choice that it makes it uh, you know something apparent immediately. Look at the image of F, it is something sitting inside. F in this case, yeah, not R, we are allowing any field F, right. So image of F is sitting inside F, image of small f that is little f, that functional is sitting inside F. 
So what could be the possible dimension of this? 1, right? Or any other possibility? 0. When can it be 0? Sorry? But what sort of a functional do we have then in mind if the image consists of only 0? So it's the identical 0 mapping, right? So if, if this functional f were to map even a single vector in the vector space v to anything but 0, then what happens? So, okay, let me erase this example. Where is it? Yeah. So, if there exists v in v such that f of v is not equal to 0, then image of f is equal to f. Why? Because of course, if this is not equal to 0, so let f of v is equal to c, which is not equal to the 0, right? Now, if you want any other object in the field, then what do you have to do? You just have to scale up the f and you will find its pre-image. What you are saying is essentially if this f is not identical to the 0 mapping, then I can always find a pre-image in the vector space v which maps it to any non-zero element in that, uh, in that field. So if I found one non-zero element in the field which has a pre-image, then every non-zero element in the field will have a pre-image. It is but natural, right, because of the linearity of f. The linearity of f guarantees that. So suppose you want, suppose we want to ascertain the pre image of alpha in the field, then what do we need to do? Implies let v1 equal to what? Alpha c inverse v. Because c is non-zero, right? Because c is non-zero in the field, therefore c has a multiplicative inverse. <coughs> implies f of v1 is equal to f of alpha c inverse v because of the linearity we can pull it out so it's alpha c inverse f v but f v is just c so therefore this is equal to alpha it's just a sort of formal way of writing what we have just argued if you have at least one vector which maps to anything but the 0 of the field, then you have spanned the entire f with your linear functional. So the only way that the dimension of this image is 0 is if it is identically the 0 functional which is then a boring case. We are not really interested in that. So in general, if you pick out a non-zero functional, this number is always going to be 1. It is lower bounded by, it is greater than or equal to 0, but it cannot be greater than 1 also because it is after all mapping the, into the field and the field cannot be of dimension more than 1 over itself, right? So therefore, we have unless f is equal to the 0 of the uh, 0 of this, yeah, we have dimension v minus 1 is equal to dimension of the kernel of f. Straightforward, right? Nothing, nothing too great about it. It follows from very obvious arguments, right? Okay? All right. Now, the next claim is going to be that this object that we have now defined here is not just any arbitrary set of functionals, but it is also a vector space. Does it require a proof? It does not because if you let w equal to f, we have already seen l from v to w is a vector space. 
So in the special case when d, uh, w turns out to be just f, so f is a vector space over itself of dimension 1. So this being a vector space is not really a surprise, it is very obvious. Is it obvious to everybody that it is a vector space? All right. So I will just go ahead and still write that down. Vector space over F. And in fact, it has a very interesting name as well, okay. With in terms of its relation to V, right, V prime is the dual vector space to V. So you wonder what is the relation between those two vector spaces that leads us to call them as a dual of one another. Like why is it a dual? Yeah. Why wherein lies this uh, notion of duality in the middle of all this? So this is clear. I'm going to erase this. Oh, sorry. Such that f is linear. Okay. So what is it? So that's so special about this. V prime that leads us to give this a special name. So consider a basis for V given by B is equal to V1, V2, V n. Okay. Correspondingly, consider the set. I am not giving it any name yet, but you might be guessing where I am going with this by the nomenclature that I will give it. such that any one of these fellows f i s acting on any one of these fellows v j s from here is equal to delta i j where this is basically what we call the Kronecker delta which means that this is exactly equal to 1 when i is equal to j and 0 otherwise. Okay, so this is the Kronecker delta. Right? So this is equal to 1. Let me write that using different color just for the sake of completeness is equal to 1 for i is equal to j 0 otherwise. Okay. That is the Kronecker delta definition. Okay. So we have gone ahead and corresponding to a basis here, we have gone ahead and defined this set here. And we might wonder where we are going with this, but again as I said, pay attention to the, to the notation that I am using here and you might be able to guess one step ahead as to where we are pushing. All right. The claim is in other words, these objects that I have defined 
corresponding to a basis in V, these objects remember are coming from V prime, right? We see these fellows take objects inside V and map them to, of course, the special ones and zeros, but they are objects in the field. So it says that in order to get a hold on any object inside this dual vector space, all I need are these fellows. That is, this is a generating set for every linear functional. Remember what have I done? Given a basis, I have cooked up this set in a very special way because it is related to the original basis in V. And now I am saying that this set is a generating set for every linear functional that there is. Okay. So how do we go about proving this? Okay. Here is what we will do. Suppose, so this is a quick sketch of the proof. Suppose f given in v prime, suppose f is given in v prime, okay, that is where we stop, all right. Choose f hat is equal to summation f v i times f i. So, so this is how I am defining i of course goes from 1 to n. <clears throat> what does that mean? It essentially means that look this is an object that also has to belong to this. So this is an object that also belongs to this. What I will now show is In other words, what I am going to show is that the difference between these two fellows maps to the zero functional. That is, it takes any object, anything that you give it, give to this object as an input, it is the zero functional. It maps it to zero. So this is the zero of the V prime, that is a dual space, which means it is a zero functional. And that would then mean that this f can be represented in this manner. Because if it is a 0 functional identically, then this is its additive inverse, right? So therefore, f is equal to f hat, right? But if I want to show that, what do I need to do? If the claim is that it is a linear functional, linear mapping after all, what do I have to do in order to show that something is a, I mean, two, two linear functionals or two, two linear transformations agree on every vector in the domain? What do I need to do? I just need to show that they agree on any basis set. That is exactly what we have seen. You can uniquely characterize the action of a linear transformation by seeing what it does to any basis set. So a linear functional is nothing but a special kind of a linear uh, transformation. So if we can show that this fellow acting on any basis, in this case let it be this basis, if every object in this basis set B is taken to 0, then it is indeed identically the 0 functional. And therefore, F must be given by F hat. And if F is given by F hat, then of course, F is spanned by or generated by F1 through Fn. In other words, B prime is a generating set for V prime. Any questions on this so far? Please ask. If it's not clear, anything is not clear, just ask. Feel absolutely free to ask. I can start at the beginning. It's very important that you understand these concepts. I could follow till, till uh, we are trying to show that F hat is a member of B prime. Yeah. Right? So uh, F is any general, uh, any, any, any linear functional. Any linear functional that you have taken. Yes. 
I'm, I have created an f hat in a very sort of an intuitive choice, you might say, or a clever choice, depending on how you view it. Exotic choice, but yeah. Yeah, okay, exotic choice. It's your choice of words, not mine. But anyway, the point is that if you choose this f hat, at the very outset, what I have done is I have chosen it in a way that is it's spanned by these fellows or generated by this these fellows. So that if yeah, fi. Fi, yeah. yeah. Look, these are just scalars. So this is fi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, if I can manage to show that this f is indeed equal to this f hat, then this f is also representable in terms of fellows in this and nothing but this, or as a linear combination of fellows in this. So therefore, any object that I pick from v prime is indeed generated by objects inside this set b prime alone. That's all I'm trying to prove. I'll prove the linear independence afterwards. But as of now, let's just try and prove that. Now, in order to do that, I'll have to show that any member in the basis, because what is this? This is a function null. It takes objects in V, maps it to the field. So if I take a basis for V and show that every object in the basis for V gets mapped to 0, then this is identically the 0 linear function null. Right? So let's try and do that. So what is it? It is f v i minus for, let's say for v is equal to v i. This is f v i minus. What happens to summation f v, okay, let's say this is v is equal to v k. So I'll just take the kth element. So this is f v i into f i v k. But look, because of that Kronecker product thingy that I have defined, this is not really a complete sum. This is just one term because unless i is equal to k, every other term is automatically 0, is it not? So therefore, this just leaves me. So f minus f hat acting on v k is given by this, which is nothing but f v k minus f v k times delta k k. But delta k k is nothing but plus 1. So therefore, this is 0. Yeah? This is the 0 of the field, of course. So it is the 0, and this k was not a very special choice, right? For any k, for any k ranging from 1 through n, it's taken it to 0. So therefore, members in the basis, all of them get pulverized and mapped to the 0 of the field. So therefore, this mapping, this f minus f hat, must be the 0 linear functional. f minus f hat is equal to the 0 of v prime, which means that f is equal to f hat and is contained inside the span of, sorry, b prime is what I had named it, and thus shall remain its name, right? So indeed, this choice that I had just pulled out of the hat apparently is now a generating set, right? So if we are trying to push for this being a candidate basis for the dual space, the next object that we must get our hands on is to prove that this is a linearly independent set. So we'll prove that in the next module. Any questions on this? What we have here? This is clear, I hope. Yes? So we are choosing the basis such that fi of vj is such defined, right? Yes, we, 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 we are not calling it a basis yet. Yeah, but we are choosing. We are choosing this, yeah, this chronicler, this choice, this chronicler delta. What do you mean by such a thing will not exist? Like I'm just defining this. So it's, it's, it's the indicator, exactly. That's so that's that's exactly the term. So I would not like to draw a figure here because it's uh, because you know vectors are not after all points, right? But if I had this, you know, very abuse of representation and things like that. So if you call it v1, v2, and sort of things like this, then it's this f1 v1 is equal to one. So it just lights up. If you pass F1 through it, this LED glows, the others don't glow, or so to say. It's the indicator. Yeah? 
right. So now having seen this our next claim will be that this set is also linearly independent. 